Hey everybody, this is American Nana. Um, let me see. I know I got all this stuff to adjust. Um, let me just say, yeah, I guess I, I've got on a like a summer shirt, and I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's hot, and I have to have my glasses on because, um, folks. Oh, hair. Um, I have something to read to you. Now, I want to say that, you know, mm, it's kind of hard watching all these little rallies that are supportive of Karen Reed. And I'm so far away. I don't like crowds or anything, but I would go to that. Anyway, I know that I'm jumping all around, and I do apologize, but I'm trying to go back, and I will tell you that today, please have sympathy, feel sorry for me. Um, I'm asking for a pity party. Um, any ideas, let me know. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if anything could make this any better, to be honest. I had to listen to Lowly because I'm doing motions and I'm listening to those. I had an extremely difficult time staying awake and then after he was finished and I'd go to like take a note, I was, um, I wasn't sure what to do because the way he talks and everything, it's so all jumbled up, run together and, and you know, I think he talks confusing for a reason. It, it maybe that's how he gets people convicted. Just shut him up, right? Anyway, um, I'm, I told y'all I was going to dig, and I'm, on, I'm going to keep on digging. And um, I was falling asleep so bad listening to him. I love listening to Yanetti and Jackson. But the one thing that I am starting to just get totally irate about is, you know, okay, so the judge is... You know, she's on her turf, and, and she acts like she doesn't like the defense whatsoever. Um, for example, Lally could stand wherever, and he could address the court. He could speak. But if it was, and the defense would ask if he could go to the podium, because they couldn't hear him. So the judge would then ask him to go to the podium. However, if Miss Little or Mr. Yanetti or Mr. Jackson, if they tried to say anything and you could hear them, I mean they were they were pronunciating pretty loudly. I know. I know that crabby crabby pants Crabby pants could have heard them, and so could you know whiny Lally, who was in front of them. Um, their problem is Lally talks like a mouse, addresses just you know he's just around here, his head down, and his back to everybody. I mean, how does he expect us to know what he's saying, right? So let me just excuse me. I I I. I can't stand that. I'm sorry. All right. So, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take too long tonight. Um, and I'm probably gonna do short ones because I have I have some reports that I'm gonna read now. What I find absolutely amazing about some of these reports is that there's no date that the report was written.
And I want everybody to keep in mind, please, that we are talking about Officer John O'Keefe, who was, uh, you know, they can say he, 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 I mean, he was dead on that front lawn. I understand that you have to wait for your body temperature to go up so that you can then be declared, but whatever that may mean. Um, so, and you know, Proctor and everyone has prided themselves on this wonderful, beautiful, thorough investigation into Officer John O'Keefe's death. They wanted to be so thorough and leave no stones unturned. Remember? Remember Proctor had that within the first 12 hours, as he puts it? I say he had it in the first four, and that's giving him a lot of leeway. Anyway, let me get to this, okay? So, um, I hope you enjoy it. You're going to have to excuse me because if... Uh, I get the glare. I don't know if it comes out that way, but the glare drives me crazy. However, I can't see without the glasses anymore. Just cannot do it. And I can't look at you guys. Well, I don't know where y'all are anyways, but I... Yeah, that makes no sense. Um, okay, so I don't know if I'll be sn snarky at all. I, I'm, I'm going to try to just, you know, I'm looking for some awesome reports on this thorough investigation. April the 7th, 2022. To Detective Lieutenant Brian P. Tully from Trooper Michael Proctor. Interview of Brian Albert regarding this really pisses me off. This 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 right here. This really pisses me off. John O'Keefe motor vehicle homicide now in the case number I think on this one is yeah, this one's messed up, or, or the other ones down the road are messed up, because the case number is different. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Because this is, this is, a, this is a, Trooper Michael Proctor's report of the interview of Brian Albert. On January 29th, 2022, at approximately 6.04 a.m., the Canton Police Department received a 911 call for a male party. John O'Keefe discovered unresponsive outside of 34 Fairview Road. Canton Police, Fire, and EMS responded to the scene. Canton Fire and EMS were dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for an unresponsive male discovered outside in the snow and CPR was in progress. Canton EMS transported the victim to Good Samaritan Hospital where he was determined to be deceased. At the Waterfall Bar on Friday night, January 28th, and the homeowner of 34 Fairview is Brian Albert. I'm going to read that sentence again because I'm reading it just the way it's written. I don't want y'all to think I've had... I'm going to read it again because it doesn't make any sense to me. So, let, let me see. 
at the Waterfall Bar on Friday night, January 28th, and the homeowner of 34 Fairview is Brian Albert. Brian arrived at the McCabe's house on Saturday morning and agreed to speak with investigators. Brian and his wife Nicole arrived at Waterfall Bar at approximately 10 p.m. to meet some friends. Brian only met John O'Keefe a few times and did not know Karen Reed. Brian stated when John and Karen entered the bar, they appeared to be in a good mood, did not observe any arguing amongst the two or with anyone else. While speaking with John at the bar, Brian stated that he did not appear to be intoxicated and did not speak with Karen. When Brian and Nicole left the bar to go home, John and Karen were still inside. Brian stated that he did not know John and Karen were coming to his house and were invited by Jennifer McCabe. Brian stated he would have welcomed them inside if they arrived, but they did not know they were coming over. But they did not know they were coming over. Okay, sorry guys. I'm sorry. I thought I could read better. Brian stated he did not see a vehicle out front of his home did not know John and Karen were outside and did not hear any loud noises from the street. Folks, that's a major investigating right there from Trooper Proctor. All right. And mind you, that was written up on April the 6th. Okay, I'm gonna read one more. This is, well, one. Yeah, I'm gonna read one more and then I'm gonna take a break and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll read Jennifer McCabe's. Lord. Okay, now I have another one, April 7th, 2022, Tatoli from Proctor. This is the interview of Matthew McCabe regarding John O'Keefe motor vehicle homicide. I'm trying to think, why do they keep calling it a homicide? I mean, it's not, nothing's been proven. Someone has passed away, but doesn't mean it's a homicide, does it? If I died right now, would that be a homicide? Or only if you assisted me in that? I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. I'm waiting for the good stuff. This is this is true Proctor hard, hard at work here. Okay. On January 29th, 2022, at approximately 6.04, the Canton Police Department received a 911 call for a mail party John O'Keefe discovered unresponsive outside of 34 Fairview Road. Canton Police, Fire, and EMS responded to the scene. Canton Fire and EMS were dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for an unresponsive male discovered outside in the snow and CPR was in progress. Matt, I read that again. Is it just me or Canton Police, Fire, and EMS responded to the scene? Canton Fire and EMS were dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for an unresponsive male discovered outside in the snow and CPR was in progress. I think maybe he hadn't had, maybe he's been sitting around with uh, Higgins having some of them beers. Oh, I'm sorry, hard whiskey. Mm -mm -mm. 
And then it's, <laughs> let me finish it up, I'm sorry. Canton EMS transported to the, transported the victim to Good Samaritan Hospital where he was determined to be deceased. At the Waterfall Bar on Friday night, January 8th, and at 34 Fairview Road was Matthew McCabe. Sergeant Buchanick and I arrived at Matthew's residence on January 29th and agreed to speak with investigators. Are y'all following me with this? Because this is not just me, right? This is, this is a professional who's done this for a long time. Let me reread that last sentence again. Sergeant Buchanick. Is Buchanick Bukaki or is Bukaki somebody else? I don't, I don't, I don't really, anyway. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm rattling on y'all probably like, but. Okay, so it says, you know, that he was, you know, it just flows right into where he was determined to be deceased. The next sentence just picks up with, at the Waterfall Bar on Friday night, January 28th, and at 34 Fairview Road was Matthew McCabe. Sergeant Buchnick and I arrived at Matthew's residence on January 29th and agreed to speak with investigators. So I'm believing what that sentence says is Matthew agreed to speak to investigators. Lord of mercy. All right, page two of this one. Matthew has known John for approximately eight years and met Karen Reed a handful of times. He did not know any of the medical issues John may have had. I didn't either. Matthew and his wife, Jennifer, arrived at the Waterfall Bar at approximately 9 p.m. on Friday, January the 28th. Matthew stated they went to the bar to have some drinks and food with friends. Matthew stated, John and Karen entered the waterfall bar by themselves and John was wearing a baseball hat with a curved visor. Matthew did not observe any arguing amongst John and Karen or with anyone else inside the bar. Matthew stated Karen was consuming a clear liquid he believed to be a vodka drink. As the night was winding down, Matthew went over to speak with the band as everyone in the bar was leaving. Matthew stated John and Karen left before him and the only people left inside of the bar were the four band members and himself. Matthew left and got into his vehicle where Jennifer was waiting for him and heard her call John to invite him to Brian Albert's house. I didn't, I guess I got confused. Cause you know, having to listen to Lally anyway to try to find any pertinent information that might've been truthful was hard enough. But I just thought that they were talking about going there prior to leaving and that it was like an open invitation. I didn't realize that Jennifer called John to invite him to Brian Albert's house because I thought that was done at the bar, right? Because that when they left, um, oh, that really nice couple, when she, uh, when she uh, testified, she said that um, Jennifer said, you're coming with me. Now, of course, and here goes my sidetrack business, so so forgive me for this. But, I, you know, the thing that amazed me so much about 
Jennifer McCabe on the stand was I don't remember right uh, what else oh I don't know I was in shock I was in shock She, of course, was the only one out there in the front of the house using the phone to call 911, sounding just as calm as a cucumber, who then, um, Ryan Albert, he says that she, you know, was just a frantic mess up in their bedroom waking them up. So, I guess she, I guess her shock is just when the right people are watching her. You know, I, I can handle situations and after it's finished then I can fall apart but I don't I don't see that in what she's trying to to put down there if that makes sense I'm not getting it so somebody let me know if I'm remembering incorrectly please I thought it was just that they were talking about it inside the bar but anyway, what I was going to say about, yeah, Lord, say, say, Lord, love a duck. I, I don't see, I don't see how y'all can. Okay, so it's called squirrel. Um, I do a lot of squirreling. All right, so focus. Jennifer McCabe on the stand would be, I don't remember, or just you know just a complete jerk when the defense was questioning her or sweet as sugar when it was lowly and um so she had time she didn't remember things and then she had oh my god moments you know things that she couldn't explain for what over a year about why she said something and then all of a sudden oh my god oh my god she was in shock and horror, which get a life, lady. I mean, this, you know, 2022, that comment that you say just gave you shock and horror. You know, I really want to say that you're the only one that spoke about that in the trial, and you couldn't wait to get it out. It wasn't something that Carrie Roberts spoke about. And do you know why, Jim McCabe? Because although we all feel for John O'Keefe and all want him to have justice, it didn't look really good with what Carrie Roberts said about him. Just I mean, you know, let's face it, at his age, not committed, he's a playboy. He just happens to be raising some kids. And um, apparently he has relationships and they, you know, kind of dwindle after a couple years. When he's done, he's done. That's what it seems like. And I don't mean that disrespectfully at, at all. But to insinuate the shock and horror. Okay, anyway, I just had to do it because I, I was just like, I got off on it. I just, I didn't remember that she actually phoned to invite him. So, if anybody can let me know, let me know. All right, I'm sorry, and here's the, you know, I mean, these are just not very long reports. <laughs> I want y'all to remember, and I'm not saying this in any funny mannerism, because I don't mean it funny, but the, the, thought process and the words that I want to say would probably get me kicked off of YouTube for the rest of my life because what I'm reading is Trooper Proctor you know and he's the one that did this big major investigation and had it all figured out within as he said 11-12 hours I say four alright so while at 34 Fairview Road, Matthew stated he observed a big, dark SUV parked to the right of the house. Matthew stated 
He was making these observations from the front door. Matthew stated, he looked out the front window and observed the same big dark SUV had moved to another side of the property, approximately 15 to 20 feet. Matthew was not sure how long the vehicle was outside, but did not bear, did not hear any loud noises or screaming from inside. Okay, folks, I'm going to read this sentence again. I guess this is what happens when you don't write your report for a couple months. You know, let me read, let me read this again. <laughs> Matthew was not sure how long the vehicle was outside for, but did not hear any loud noises or screaming from inside. Trooper Proctor. I'm not even gonna call you Trooper. I mean, but come on. Somebody should have sent him back some kind of school to write a report. This is this is horrible. So we can take it a few ways because we know Matthew was inside 34 Fairview. So he didn't hear any loud noises or screaming inside the house, I'm guessing. But I'm guessing we're also supposed to assume that since that vehicle was out in front of the house and he was in the house, that he didn't hear any screaming Or loud noises from inside the vehicle. Maybe that's what he meant, you think? Really scares me when I can try to figure out what an imbecile thinks. All right. Matthew stated both times he observed the vehicle on the street, the headlights were facing towards Chapman Street. Matthew stated he observed tire tracks in the snow on the street in front of the house. Matthew described the pattern as a wave or V-shape. Matthew stated the tire tracks went from the curb in front of 34 Fairview towards the neighbor across the street and then back towards the curb. You know, for somebody who didn't bother to write anything down for a few months, Matthew sure did state a lot of things. The pattern of the tracks were consistent with making a three-point turn. So folks, let me just ask, okay? If you could see tire tracks going from the curb, the front of 34 Fairview. We're supposed to believe that you would have not seen a gentleman laying in the front yard. You know, there was something I was going to say the other day because when something is between you in your line of sight and you're, you're aware of it, it is amazing that the one thing that will jump out at you is the thing that does not belong there. Am I making, does that make sense? Or am I the, or am I just a bigger fruitcake than I thought? If, in fact, I'm looking out this away and there was A squirrel. I get them running around here sometimes. They'll run through the front. I'm like, why don't y'all back there in the trees eating that corn I have out there for you? But, okay. Let's say that between me and, you know, 
far away, I'm looking at something, and between me and what I'm looking at, there is a squirrel that is running up, say, to a bird. I'm gonna see that. It's on the ground. I'm gonna be looking this way. But you take in your surroundings, and they do register in here, they do. So, you know, Jen McKay playing a, playing a big game up there on that stand and expects us to buy it. It's impossible. It's, I mean, it's just utterly impossible. So, you know, I, I, I know Jen McCabe said that she saw tire marks too. I didn't remember Matthew had, but the thing that gets me, um, is if you can see the tire tracks and then you're saying she made a three-point turn and y'all said she said she made a three-point turn which I have no idea I don't know of where there's any um, information on what Karen Reed actually said from Karen Reed so did she say she was making a three-point turn? I don't know if she did or not, but they, you know. All right. The pattern of the tracks were consistent with making a three-point turn. Matthew stated he did not see those tracks prior to the big black SUV arriving outside the house. I'm still confused on where the, where the Jeep was during all this because Nagel and them said they didn't, they didn't, um, let me see, hold on, they didn't, um, They didn't see a Jeep. So, was Higgins' Jeep there or not? Here, I'm just trying to do this so I can hold it up and show y'all. Thing right here. Let me see. I think it's gonna be backwards, I'm almost done. Oh yeah, that's backwards. Well, that's okay, so y'all can see though. I'm not, I'm not fibbing. So, that takes, I mean, that, that is some heavy duty, heavy duty investigation right there. We got a winner, y'all. We need to put him on some kind of, he needs to be on high security, high alert. That, that right there, that right there. All right, so... I'm going to stop right here. I think I've already given my opinion as I read it. If y'all can answer any of my questions that I had, y'all let me know. I may try to do... Oh, mercy. Let's see. You know, we, where's Jim McCabe? Let me see. Paul Albert. Oh yeah. Okay. Hang on. One of three. All right. Let's let's do her too. Okay. Give me a bit, and I'll be back and read that one because that was also written on April 6th. Oh, I see. It 
So he wrote Matthew McCabe and Brian Albert up on the 7th. And he wrote up Jennifer McCabe on the 6th. And all the interviews happened at January 29th that I'm referring to right now. All right. I'll be back.